Praise the Lord God Almighty, for this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. For he is great, mighty, sovereign, and holy. He is the King of glory and the Prince of peace, the everlasting Father. And we joy in his salvation. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, let us exalt his name together. Good evening, good evening, those of you joining in at this time. We're going to start our Tuesday night Bible class. We're going to continue in our book, Breaking the Threefold Demonic Court. There's eight chapters in this book, and right now we're in the third chapter. And we believe in God that he's going to continue to minister to our hearts, give us revelation, insight, and understanding into the mysteries of the gospel to help change our lives and break the threefold demonic cords in our heart and in our mindsets, that we can be changed from the inside out, become more and more like God. So this is the book that's on the display. If you don't have this book, get this book. You can find it on Amazon.com, ChristianBooks.com. You can find it on there as well. So get this book. I pray that you would find interest and be led by the Holy Spirit to get this book and invest it. It's only about $10, 10 to $15. You can get this book and it will help liberate your life. Ever since I started teaching this book, I have been under attack, but yet God has been great and His mercy has been enduring forever in my life. He's been breaking chains and shackles in my own life and strongholds are breaking by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen, amen. So let's open the word of prayer tonight. Father, we thank you. We praise you, Lord God, for the victory in Christ Jesus, for you are great, sovereign, and holy. There's no one like you in all the earth, O God. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. And tonight, God, I ask that you speak to us by divine revelation, God, from the oracles of God's word that will help bring change in our hearts and our minds and our spirits, God, that we would be more submitted to your lordship and your authority in the name of Jesus. We give you glory, give you honor, we give you praise, O oh God. Remove the business from the day of our minds, O oh God, and out of our hearts that we'd be focused to hear from you if the Spirit speaks to our hearts, O oh God. We ask, O oh God, that you would liberate those who are in bondage, those who are in the hospitals and homeless and homes, those who are bedroom at home, afflicted, God, that you bring healing and deliverance in their minds and by their spirits, God. And we thank you, Lord God, that you're faithful to do this as we trust in you with all of our hearts and lean on to our own understanding. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Tonight we're going to pick up what we left off from last week. We were talking about Baal wants it all. We tried, we talked about Baal tries to seize authority Ill illegitimately into our lives. And it comes through the avenues of the spirit world, even through people who in, in, engage in the demonic forces of, of idol worship. And that spirit is, is a usurping spirit. It'll take your power from you and use your power to walk in darkness and rebellion against God and keep you isolated from God. But the Holy Spirit wants us to recognize what it is in your life that's taking the place of God. God said, I'm, Thou shalt have no God before me, for I am a jealous God. If God is a God who reigns over all the earth, and that's the God we should serve, the God who, who brought the children of Israel out of bondage, the same God who raised Lazarus from the dead, the same God that used his own son, Jesus Christ, to open the blinded eyes and unstop deaf ears, cause the cripple to walk again. This is the same God, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead has quickened our mortal bodies and made us alive in Christ Jesus that we can walk by the influence and leadership of the Holy Spirit and break down those idols because idol worship is a sin before God and it will keep you isolated and in bondage and it keep you defeated. So many people are bound because of the things that allow to influence their mindsets through other people, television, radio, media. They allow themselves to be in, in, impacted by these demonic forces to where it controls their life. And they wonder why they always feel miserable and feel defeated and feel like no, no, no good and feel hopeless because you gave into a force that's not of God. And any time you give into a demonic force, the enemy has power to control your destiny if you let him. We got to take back our authority tonight. We got to take back 
a, a walk with God and start walking in truth and righteousness according to the word of God. He said, those who walk in the spirit will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. We got to walk in the spirit. That's not sometimes, not when you feel like it, not when it's convenient, but every day of your life, you need to walk in the spirit's leadership. Amen. We're going to talk about tonight. Bell promotes a religious spirit. Bell promotes a religious spirit. But I found some information before I get into the book tonight to talk about Bell promotes a religious spirit. I want to read something what a religious spirit is. A religious spirit. Glory to God. Let me find the information. Okay, I have it. So a religious spirit is a type of demonic spirit that influences a person or group of people to place a genuine relationship with God with works and tradition. You hear that? A type of spirit that influences a person, an organization, churches, God's people to replace their genuine relationship with God through works and tradition. Tradition is your set of rules and regulations that you've been following for over 30, 40, 50 years and have not swayed from it, nor can anyone convince you to change from your, your traditional ways because you're stuck in your ways. God had a problem with the church in Corinth because those people had become religious. And Paul had to speak a word about works. If you go, you find in First Corinthians chapter three. Read the entire chapter. He had to come and turn over their spiritual apple carts and open their eyes to see the truth in God's word concerning religion, because He made it clear how important it is. Our works will be tried by fire. Works of haste, wood, stubble, stone, all these different things, the different materials that He mentions in that passage of Scripture. It's the things that are going to be tried by the fire of God. You know, our God is an all-consuming fire. And if you come before the living God and God begins to try you by his fire, you're going to find yourself faithful, accountable, and measure up to God's standards based on the fire of God, or you'll be destroyed. He says, your works be tried by the fire of God. He says, the works might be destroyed, but you'll still be saved. See, God even has a remedy even when it comes to measuring us by his fire. It's up to us to determine ourselves that I'm going to follow after God's rule and his regulations and not be stuck in a traditional system. You have a lot of religious church, a lot of religious folk who do not believe in prophetic anointing. They do not believe that prophets are in the earth today. But God said in his word, Ephesians 4.11, he gave some apostles, some prophets, some pastors, some teachers, some evangelists. He said for the working of the ministry, for if I know about Christ. Why? Because he, he knew that these things still need to be in place today to lead people in the divine order of God's will and his plan and his purpose. When people operate out of a religious spirit, they attempt to earn salvation. Ain't that something? We try to earn salvation by our works. We, we think, I heard people say this many times, that I'm a good person. Uh, I, I believe in Jesus, but I don't go to church. I don't believe God going to send me to hell. The word tells us that the only way to the kingdom of God is to be born again, a spirit of water. If you have not been born again, then you are facing the jeopardy of when you die to have your destiny in the lake of fire for eternity. And that's going to happen. We need to pay attention and read the Bible. Get the word in your spirit. Accept the man be born again. He cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. That is the word of God. Except you accept Jesus Christ, the Lord has said you can't do no works to earn your salvation. For, for, for salvation did not come by works of man, but by the Holy Spirit. 
It says, for God's grace was revealed to man to, not, to, to teach us to deny all in God and his word and love, live God and his soul before God and man. Salvation is a free will gift from God to us to receive through Jesus Christ's sacrifice on the cross. This evil spirit has established nine biblical beliefs. So what it's talking about, man creates their own rules and regulations of how their church is going to be governed, how they can rule over the people. And it does not line up with God's word. It's a system they put in place to have control, a mind-binding spirit. We've been talking about that for the last several months, a mind-binding spirit. And that's what they do. They create these non-biblical beliefs and heresies and customs for generations to keep you under control of their spell. You got a lot of people itemize their pastors. And they're, they're governed by their pastor's authority. And whatever the pastor tells them to do, they do that. I knew a pastor like that years ago. He had such a strong influence and control over the church to where if he told a married woman, well, I want you to meet me in my house a certain time, they would go. I mean, late at night, they would go to his house because he said he called the meeting. And he found out that those meetings tried to end up being adultery because he ended up enticing these women to have sex with them. The enemy does that through re false religion. Idol worship, and that's what we have to pay attention. Don't give it to the spirit of idol worship. Religious spirits will control you to a place to take you to de your destiny to hell. This evil spirit established non biblical beliefs. Yet, as believers, we shouldn't turn a blind eye to the work of religious spirits. It is a lurk. It is lurking around, attempting to cause judgment and destruction among believers in the body of Christ. That's deep. This spirit is so powerful. Like I talked about the Jezebel spirit before, it's conniving, it's smooth, it's conning, it's lurking about, looking for a prey. It's a predator. It's looking for someone who's not prayed up and not paying attention in their Christian walk of life to seduce you and entice you to follow idol worship. We know the enemy is an angel of light attempting to counterfeit any of God's good and perfect gifts in effort to cause chaos, confusion, shame, and guilt. He does this with the works of the religious spirit. You hear that? He attempts to counterfeit God's good and perfect gifts. The enemy is a, is a, is a, is a hypocrite, the word calls it. Hypocrisy. Wolf in sheep clothing. And he comes in through people. Because people come with you with a good message, a good way to entice you to follow them into a trap get you to a place of destruction because of their religious, religious beliefs. We have to pay attention. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for Satan himself transformed himself into an angel of light. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13 and 14 adversary, the enemy, the devil is a counterfeit. He's deceptive. He's a manipulative. And he transforms himself through people to be an apostle of Christ when they don't have no intention of even following Christ. That's why I talk about wolves and sheep clothing because I can look like I'm a child of God. I can look like I'm a minister of God. I can look like I'm a shepherd. I'm, I'm a leader. I can look like, have a characteristic to reveal, to look like something I'm not. But eventually, your true identity will reveal itself. This, this religious spirit is out to imitate the works of the Holy Spirit. 
We must be clear that no matter how hard Satan tries to, to force the works of the Holy Spirit, he cannot. But he can cause a great confusion and deception. The good news is this. When you seek to be led by the Holy Spirit, you'll be able to identify and deal with this bitter and hypocritical spirit. The spirit is on it. If you are a true child of God walking in the spirit, you are going to recognize an unclean spirit that's coming to your perimeter. And you know the influence of that spirit. And you'll be able to ward off that spirit through the power of the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit will give you the power and the ability to shut down the voices of deception. Remember I said before we have three voices speaking to us? We have ourself, we have the devil, and the Holy Spirit. We must make a decision Make the right choice to listen through our ear gates and hear the right voice in the right frequency that leads you to respond to God's voice through the power of the Holy Spirit. My God, we must be clear, must be understanding, be discerning, know this hypocritical and bitter spirit. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. My God, my God, my God. Thank you. How does a religious spirit manifest? A religious spirit can manifest in different ways. It often uses person's history and circumstances to afflict internal whispers of judgment and pressure to perform. To make you get into your mind a religious system that I have to perform, I have to do things to measure to God's standards. I have to do things to earn my salvation, to earn my blessings and favor from God. I have to do things. These infective lies plant seeds of false righteousness and holiness. That's how the enemy operates. He'll plant infectious lies, deception, control in your mindset through false righteousness and holiness. So we got to pay attention and know who you are entertaining. Hey, man, I'm going to stop right there. Some more to that, but I'm, I'll read the rest of it next week. A Pharisee or person with a religious spirit, number one, will be easily offended. Offense is rooted in pride. People who live by grace have decided they will never be offended. Getting offended is a mark of a Pharisee. How many times Jesus offended the Pharisees with his things? They got mad at him, called him a blasphemer, called him a liar, wanted to stone him to death. Check this out. A religious spirit will be quick to criticize and condemn. The first point was offense, Matthew chapter 15, verse 12. Matthew chapter 15, verse 1, it says, will be quick to criticize and condemn will be inclined to see more of what is wrong with other people, other churches, etc., than what is right with them. Notwithstanding the need for correction and rebuke, a Pharisee would too often see his primary mission only to tear down what he believes is wrong. Another point, number three, would teach as doctrine, the traditions and commands of man, not God. They don't really love Jesus. They use his name 
and make up their own Christianity. <laughs> Ain't that something? People will create their own Christianity and say, I'm following Jesus. And change the scriptures to suit themselves. Then Paul tells Timothy to beware of Pharisees and scribes and false doctrines and all these different things that take place because the people, they're going to have itching ears to follow after doctrine to satisfy their own desires. This is a prime example. Matthew chapter 15, verse 9. They make the scriptures suit themselves. Number four, will lead themselves and others to hell by subscribing to false doctrines instead of faithfulness. Obedient relationship with Jesus. Matthew chapter 23, verse 15. Be careful who's trying to lead you. If you're in a church and the pastor is not preaching the gospel and he's always preaching about himself, always talking about folk putting their mouth on him and, and always being judgmental and hypocritical and, and, and ostracizing people and talking about folk. Be careful. You need to get out of that place because that's tradition. It's not of God. It's a man. False religion. Heresy is false religion. And they teach you things that sound like the word of God, but it's not in the word of God. Number five, he will, spirit, he will be spiritually blinded. Matthew chapter 15, verse 14. They know all about rituals and form, might even know the Bible well, but nothing of relationship with Jesus and his power. It's a lot. It's 24 of these, these points. I'm just going to read a few of them. Then I'm going to get into the book. Because this, this is something we need to be aware of. When it comes to religious spirits. Number six, a religious spirit is a person who will be a hypocrite. They are an actor. Hypocrite means actor. What they present on the outside bears no resemblance of what is going on on the inside. <laughs> Ain't that something? So they tell you about Jesus, how you need to live, but it doesn't apply to them. So they want to exemplify and act like I'm really holy when I'm really a hypocrite. I'm a lying deceiver. Then it goes on to Matthew chapter 23, verse 23 through 28. Matthew chapter 23, verse 23 through 28. They will do things in order to be noticed by men. It's all about the outside instead of the heart. Jesus told his disciples in Matthew chapter 6. He talked about the posture of prayer and being heard and how the hypocrites love to stand in the streets and on the street corners and to be known by that much speaking, to be seen of men. He said they have a reward because their prideful hearts kept them wedged, separated from God. And they thought their religious works were high and pious enough to earn God's approval. But Jesus said, but when thou enter to thy secret closet and thy prayer is secret, to your father reward thee open. Read Matthew chapter 6. Okay? I'm going to read one more point, and then we're going to go on a little further. A religious spirit will seek to catch other people in their words. Matthew chapter 19, verse 3. And make judgments, judgmentalists, in order to accuse. St. Luke chapter 11, verse 53 to 24. I mean 54. 53 and 54. Pharisees are looking to read and condemn people through their actions. Works in their word. 
Instead of leaving all of, to God's judgment of the heart, Isaiah chapter 11, verse 3, Pharisees do not lovingly call out heresies in order to set people free. Their prime purpose becomes heresy hunting, looking for faults in other folk, looking to mislead you through heresies, looking to judge you. We have to be aware of the spirit of religion. Because the religious spirit is a dangerous spirit that can cause you to have spiritual suicide. Abandon your position in Christ. And God is looking for people who devoted, who surrendered, whose heart is yielded to him, whose ears are attentive to his voice, and their mouths are speaking in alignment with the Holy Spirit. To speak what God says to speak without being compromising. We have to know for ourselves who we are and whose we are and who we're serving. Walk by faith and not by sight. Walk as a person of integrity and character in the lineage of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So let's get into our book tonight. <clears throat> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hold on one second, everybody. Cameras down out almost give me one second. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I'm flipped to the other one. Turn to this. It was working. Okay. Please go into the other one. Amen. Amen. Jezebel has an abundance. Of religious zeal. Jezebel has an abundance of religious zeal. She was so real and so religious and devoted <coughs> that she introduced idolatry to her husband. King Ahab then established a religious platform for false prophets in Israel. You know, we talked about this last week, and it's very important as a child of God to really pay attention to what spirit you entertain. So many people entertain the spirits of religion and don't realize what it is that got them entrapped and ensnared. And a lot of times it's through your own words because you allow yourself to speak contradictory to the word of God. We have to get in the word and allow the spirit of God to get in us. The word will manifest in our life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Jezebel was so religious. She was so strong-willed. She influenced her husband to follow her idolatrous worship. She used the cloak of religion to manipulate the city officials as she called for a holy fast. When we talked about this last week, she called for a holy fast, but she wasn't holy. So she was deceiving God's people. And Israel fell for it. And the thing, the thing was so phenomenal about this is that she has such a great strong power to influence. She influenced the whole tribe of Israel to follow her idol worship. And they didn't turn against it. They, they gave in willfully. And that's the thing that God is looking for. Are you really going to follow me? Are you willing to die for me, to give your life up for me? Or are you going to be easily influenced by false worship? You got a lot of people in the body of Christ who call themselves holy and servants of the Most High God. And they're liars and deceivers to themselves. God ain't nowhere in, in the equation. Not saying we're not going to make mistakes as a child of God. Not saying we're going to mess up. 
because we all human, we fall short of God's glory, right? We all have situations in our life that arise that cause us to become discombobulated sometimes. But, but thank God for grace. Because God's grace has the ability and the power to keep you and to hold you and redeem you and cleanse you and purify you when you find yourself slipping off track to get you back on track. The key is repentance. If you have a repentful heart, God has the power and the ability to purify your heart and sit you right back into place in Him as if you've never fallen. I love what David said, the Lord's taking our sins as far as the east from the west and remember no more. Because we are the people who are judgmental. We judge ourselves. We judge the people. Because we make mistakes, we blame somebody else for causing to make the mistake. Then we got the, a problem of trying to take the beam out of somebody else's eye and we got all moat in our own eye. So I want to look at your sin, but not look at my sin. That's religious. That's tradition. Because a tradition person feels it okay to be judgmental and don't have no conviction. When you are truly walking in alignment with the Holy Spirit, when it comes to judging a person, read Matthew chapter 7. When you start judging somebody, so you be measured by the same, you be measured by the same judgment that you meet. So whatever way I judge you, God ain't gonna judge me. But we have to learn how to judge people by the word of God. It's okay to judge an individual when they're out of order with God when you judge them with the word of God to get them to repentance, not to bring condemnation. We have a problem when we want to condemn folk and not help folk. She was religious. She had religious zealous to evangelize the entire community, convert nations with her idol worship. That's how bad she was. She was a bad joker. The spirit behind Baal worship seduced the Israelites to be believing that religious acts were the key to be spiritual. We got to wake up, people. We got to wake up because one thing about it, the enemy is, is, is not playing games with us. We sitting on the sidelines, sitting on the shelf, not doing what God calls to do, so we sitting in either, either place and not doing nothing. If you say you call to be a servant of the Most High God, the words that we're all called to be able ministers of the gospel, that means we all need to know the gospel. We all need to know how to witness to somebody else to let them know that God loves them, that Jesus died for them, was buried and rose again from the dead, that you receive new life only by accepting the Lord and Savior of your life. But if you don't know the gospel, how are you going to tell somebody else about Jesus? One thing about it, I know there's a lot of people in the church, some people can't even read. But there's audio Bible, so we have no excuse. Anytime we try to make an excuse, the reason why I can't do something that God would do, there's a tool somewhere has been created to enable you to do what you need to do. We need to have an ambition and a desire in our hearts to do what God wants us to do. A spirit of religion requires constant outward expressions of loyalty rather than inward. Because it's all about the performance to look pious, holy, and righteous and not be holy and righteous. The commitment is based on performance rather than relationship. The Jezebel spirit does not want you to have a relationship with God. Many people today have the same type of religious zeal as it is the spirit of Baal that influenced them. The religious spirit causes people to become extremely legalistic and dogmatic in their religious views. So my religion is better than your religion. My church is better than your church. That's why I said last week, you got Catholics and Methodists, Presbyterians, Lutherans, all these, these churches should have gone in Christ, the Baptists, the Buddhists, the Muslims, all these different people cannot merge together to serve the same God. But we say we're serving God. Jesus made it clear that the time is coming. He's coming back for a bride without spider wrinkle. He's coming for a bride who has not compromised, 
who have not given in to idol worship, who have not turned to religious systems, but walked in obedience and relationship with God. He's looking for that bride that's unified. It's not about your title. It's not about your church. It's about your heart. How many times have we witnessed crimes involving Christian leaders? When you keep looking at the news, you find stuff like this happening all the time. A crime dealing with a religious leader who have compromised their Christian standards and follow after the lustful desires of the flesh and not follow after the spirit. Some are child molesters, some adulterers, some abusers, some fornicators, adulterers, with homosexuals, homosexuals and lesbians and all different things and bisexual, all that. Because they refuse to submit. It gets hard sometimes when you're dealing with strongholds. I'm telling you, it's keep it real. It's hard. Keep it God. It's hard to deal with different types of strongholds in your life. But we got to keep trusting God, His Word. Keep standing on the Word. Because God has the ability to keep you from falling, that you fall before His presence when you repent. The key is repentance. We all have fallen short of the glory of God. We're not judging neither one of us. But we're being judged by God. And the way God judges is by his word. What have you done, my son? When you come before Jesus Christ on that beam of seat of Christ in heaven, he's going to ask you, what did you do with my son? Did you believe him? Did you follow him? Did you serve him? Were you loyal? Were you dependable? That's the question God's going to ask us. Are you one who gave your life, devoted to follow me, or were you a pretender, a hypocrite? Because I tell you, every day I try to practice righteousness. <coughs> I'm human. I have weaknesses like anybody else. I have struggles like anybody else. But thank God for transparency because God has the power to give us strength in our weakness to overcome certain strongholds in our lives if we want to be free. If you don't want to be free, you'll never be free. You always start with offense. The word calls it lukewarm. And if you're lukewarm, he said he'll spit you out of his mouth. So we got to be careful with the life that I'm living. Am I devoted or am I turning away from God through immorality? The death of the Spirit, it seduces people away from God's holiness and true character. We have to be careful Who's speaking into your ear gate? Because your ear gate is the avenue that introduces you to any type of spirit to come into your heart. Because it comes through media, from radios, computers, tablets, cell phones, people, many different avenues we hear from. And when we hear those different things that contradicts God's word, I intended to go up and say, hey, that's not God, and shut it down. Even when it comes to talking to people on the phone, if you know that person is toxic, why do you keep entertaining them? God spoke to, to me a, a while back. He says, certain people that call you, call you for the reason to gossip and spread toxicity. They have no intention to turn their life over to the Lord but it won't make you a dumping ground. And I got to the place where I don't even, I don't even answer a call from certain people. I don't have many people calling me at all. And I thank God for that. Because it keeps me sane. Keep me connected to the Lord. Because some people call you, they don't mean you no good. They looking to trick you up and cause you to fall. But God wants us to pay attention and wake up as a church. And submit to his lordship and authority. How often do we say God told me to do this or do that? As an excuse for not being accountable. An excuse for not maintaining holiness and righteousness. An excuse for not being pure in God's presence. God is looking for a people who believes who's steadfast, who's faithful in their servitude to serving Jesus Christ. 
as their Lord and Savior. God's mercy and his restoration means an adjustment. We got to be willing to adjust ourselves from the things we're comfortable with, the things we're familiar with. I mean, we talk about familiar spirits. They're familiar spirits that you get comfortable with. You, you're used to those spirits coming to your life. You're used to those certain types of spirits coming around you. You get used to people mistreating you. <clears throat> That's like a woman in an abusive relationship or a man in an abusive relationship. You know good and well you don't need to stay in a relationship. But you love them. So you love the abuse. You say, no, I don't love the abuse, you know, but they keep mistreating me. But, but I know they don't mean what they're doing. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. They mean what they're doing. Because it's a spirit in them to cause them to harm you. If you're in an abusive relationship, that's not of God. God did not tell you to let somebody knock you upside your head till they kill you. You need to have wisdom and discernment on know what to accept and tolerate from an individual in your life and to get away from them if they don't mean you no good. I don't care if it is your husband or your wife. God is not going to allow you to stay in something that's going to kill you. You make a choice to stay in something to kill you. We have to learn how to walk away from unrighteousness and maintain our spiritual integrity and our loyalty to our God. Baal is the God of performance. In 1 Kings chapter 18, Elijah confronted Baal's false prophet. They executed their false gods to speak to them. So they cried out and demonically manifested in a religious frenzy. The false prophets cut themselves so their blood gushed out as they prophesied until the end of the day, attempting to get the attention from their dead idol. In fact, it was their custom to express themselves in this fashion as they worshiped Baal. So they cried aloud and cut themselves as was their custom with knives and lances until the blood gushed out of them. They prophesied, but there was no voice, no one answered, and no one paid attention. 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 28 through 29. Emphasis, mind all attempts to be noticed by Baal is in vain. The outward expression of these false prophets were all performance and no relationship. So when Elijah was instructed by God to confront the false prophets of Baal, he told him to call on your God. He said, do what you got to do to get your God attention. He said, he said we're going to have a sacrifice. We're going to get the, if your God answers, he's going to burn the sacrifice. So Elijah Say, okay, well, your God answered. Let, let me call on my God. He said, put the sacrifice out here, put some wood on there, put some, some water on the sacrifice, and you know, and do all you want. Dig a trench around the sacrifice, fill it up with, with, with water and, and oil and, and burn it. And it says that God came down in fire and consumed the whole sacrifice. And he commanded the priest of the Lord. To take out their source. Do not let neither one of them escape. And he killed all the prophets of Baal. The outward expression of false prophets were performance and no relationship. It's the same for many of us today. When we when idol or idolatry and the spirit of Baal are active, we feel we must perform correctly and do what is customary. So we'd rather follow our customs than follow God's word. We may not be cutting ourselves to get God's attention, but we may feel the pressure to perform so God will visit us and answer, answer our need. How many times have you heard people say, Lord, come and dwell among us. God, come do this. God, come do that. When God's already there. You hear that? We're crying for God to show up in the midst but he's already there because the spirit of God lives inside of you. When we come together collectively in the body of Christ, God's spirit is invoked 
to bring forth the consuming fire, bring forth God's cloud of glory. Because God dwells in a holy place, not a corrupt temple or a dirty temple. He comes in a place where his presence is invited, where he's already there to inhabit the tabernacle. When you know your word, you'll stop begging and pleading for God to do things. We'll stop trying to perform and get God to answer us. Religious spirits will keep you in a place where you have to beg for God's attention to heal you. Got to beg for God to, to take this pain away. Got to beg for God to give you some money to meet your bills. Do, do these different things I need to do, God. Help me, Lord God. Please, God. Please, God. The words that ask you should be given, see, you should find like the door is open, right? But he said, him to keep asking, he said, the door will already be open. God said, he already says, you're going to ask, but it's already done. For him to keep knocking, he'll find. Him to keep, he's, him keep seeking, he'll find. He's going to keep knocking the door open. Because you got to keep being persistent in faith. He's not saying keep begging. He's saying in faith, it's a persistence that caused God to answer. I can ask and shall be given. I can seek and we find. Knock the door open. Why? Because I'm asking in faith that it's already done. Jesus said we can speak to the mountains and command the mountains to move and it will obey us. We have the God kind of faith. So the God kind of, it sometimes it seems that God's word contradicts itself. But it doesn't. Because when you really pay attention to the details in the scripture, what God is really speaking to us. He's really trying to introduce you to the place of faith to overcome the religious system of your mind. We get stuck in the customary systems in the church in a cycle to where we don't allow God to move in our presence. Because we get so religious and high-minded, we shut God out the door and we do our religious performances and our works Thinking God is in the midst and God is not there. He's not in performance. He's in obedience. Amen. Deborah, God bless you. God deals with me about listening to gossip, so I had to separate myself from some family members, some friends, even some Christian friends. I don't call them. I don't call them. And, and then after a while, they just fall falling off without my doing anything about it. You know that's right. That's exactly what God wants us to do. He regulates the system to shut down the voices of religious spirits in our lives. But we have to be willing to let God do it. You know, it's this the thing. <clears throat> Some people who you've been friends with for years, naysayers, you know they're naysayers, but it's your friend. They love to bring toxic things to you. They love to spread gossip and rumors. And you keep listening to them because they're your friend. Year after year after year, the same old cycle, same old stuff, same old habits, same old behavior. Nothing changes. All of the same stuff with the same person. And the Holy Spirit comes along. When you finally get tired of being sick and tired and start walking the beat to God's word and hear his voice, God says, shut off that call. Don't answer that call no more. And you say, well, that's my friend. I, I, I've been friend with them for over 30 years, and uh, they need me. And God said, no, shut, shut that voice down. Shut it out. You don't need that. And so the enemy comes along and keeps feeding you when you need this person. And God said, no, you don't. And he's trying to tell you that this person is afflicting you spiritually causing some dead weight to be placed on you to destroy you. When you obey God, I found this to be so true in my own life. There were people who used to call me all the time, don't even call me no more. And when I started listening to the voice of God and stopped receiving those calls, I got such a peace, yokes broken off my neck, weights lifted off my shoulders, because God has gave me the liberty to walk in obedience to hear his voice and not listen to toxic things. Even when it comes to certain music, things on the television, if you know it's toxic, you don't need to listen to it. Don't just shut it off. Turn from it. Because some things would breed lust in your heart. Some things would breed the pride of life. Some would induce you lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. Because it wants you to get to the place where you stop following Jesus Christ. 
and start following your desires. God says he don't tempt no man with evil, but men are tempted when they're drawn along by their own desires. So if my desire draws me away from God, then you know that ain't God. Because if you have a godly desire, it draws you closer to God. We have religious rules and regulations that govern our church systems. Often we feel that we have to prophesy a certain way, sing certain songs in particular order, take up offerings properly, have this, this order of service. We can't change from this system. We've been doing this for many years in this church, so we got to keep things to the T. You got to sing for 15 minutes. You got to prophesy for 15 minutes. You got to preach for 15 minutes, and then you got to shut the church down. They don't give God a chance to do anything in the church. I've been in church like that. They were so religious. Oh, my God, they're so religious. God was not in that church. They were in their system, their performance, their rules and regulations, their order of service. Have to stick to the rules. If you disrupt the rules, the pastor had a fit. And he would stand up and say something about it. I thank God that we're grown up today, but we're able to hear God's voice for ourselves. If you know something not aligned with God's word, I don't have to listen to it. I don't have to follow it. Thank God for Jesus. Listen to this. All in an attempt to look right to God and others. Unless the idols of Baal are torn down, we will continue to perform for God rather than seek an intimate relationship with him. Unless your religious spirit is broken, of your mindset. It will, listen to this, this. Religious spirit will be a result to an overwhelming guilt that he can never measure up to God's standards or the Lord's standards, saved by works and not by grace, through faith. So it's the opposite. For we're saved by faith through grace, not by works. But see, it should boast. But they twist it so you say by works and not by the grace. That's how religious does. It twists the word to sound like God. And all these heresies, false doctrine, in order to get your attention to follow them. So follow me and not follow Christ. Follow me, the shepherd, don't follow the Lord. Because I'm the representative of God, so really I'm God in the flesh. So you got to follow me. And that's what God is saying tonight. We got to get to a place in ourselves. We realize I cannot live without Jesus Christ in my life. So I got to follow his word to the T. No matter what people say or what they do, I have to be obedient to the spirit of God. Baal's titles, Baal's titles. We're going to talk about that next week. I'm going to stop right there, but we're going to talk about that next week, Baal's titles. There's many titles to Baal. You can look them on the internet. You'll find many different things. I was reading. I'm going to post uh, on here if you want to look, look at this this uh, documentation I got on here tonight. If I can find my cursor. I lost my cursor. There you go. I'm going to post on here where you can you can actually go back and watch this while I'm just reading on here. Because this is really good information. Somebody might want to study it. It's really a really good one. I have another one I'm looking at too tonight. And I tell you, it's liberating when you really read this information and get in your spirit. It's liberating. It has set you free. So what is religious spirit? And I tell you, it's a good teaching, really good teaching. But I want to thank all of you for coming up tonight. What you say? You say, ain't that the truth? Talking about when we all get together, what a time we're going to have. Uh, hallelujah. Praising the Lord. Wandering. Mm, in the glory cloud. My God. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you all for tuning in tonight. I pray you have heard something that will inspire you, that will help encourage you to keep walking in obedience to the word of God. Because I tell you, it's really important as a child of God to know your word. The enemy does everything in his power to keep us in prison. You have a lot of people in church are in spiritual prisons and don't even know it. 
and they find themselves constantly stuck in a certain mindset of religion and not in truth and righteousness. And God wants to break that spirit of us tonight, get us back to the place we realize how important it is to follow him wholeheartedly, mind, body, soul, and spirit. He wants your entire being. He don't want part of you. He wants to hold you. And the enemy wants to continue to manipulate and control you. But you have to wake up and have a discerning spirit and know when it's the enemy, know when it's God speaking. Because sometimes God will let the enemy test you. He will let the enemy attack you to draw you close to himself when you're out of order with God. Sometimes we get to a place, we get stuck in our own ways of doing things and we stop praying, we get comfortable watching the soap operas and movies and different things on television and don't give God no thanks. The first thing we should do when we get up in the morning, thank God, because he woke you up again another day and put his spirit in you to wake you up and he put breath in your body to breathe. I just lost a friend of mine on Sunday morning. I died from cancer and it really was a heartening, you know, uh, heart wrenching is what I'm looking for because this man used to be so strong and so powerful. He's a pastor, friend of mine for years. And he shrunk down to 100, 130 some pounds, he, was, I mean, he mentioned. And I tell you, when you get to the place where your body is breaking down, pay attention to the warning signs, go to the doctor, get checked out, because it's very important to find out what is the underlying issue that's creating your problem. Some things can be prevented, it can be worked on to get you better through medication, through therapy, different things that the doctors have that God put in place for us. But we don't pay attention to warning signs. We're messing around, kill ourselves. But I thank God for Jesus because the Holy Spirit always give me some remedies and give me wisdom on what to do to maintain my health. Amen. So I encourage you tonight, get in your word, walk by faith and not by sight. Stand fast in the liberty Christ made you free as a child of God. Know who you are and whose you are. Know it without a shadow of a doubt that I am a child of the Most High God. He dwells in me and I dwell in him. Continue to draw near to God that he draws nigh unto you. Watch God begin to fill you with the Spirit every day with wisdom and knowledge, insight, understanding, and revelation to make your life better, your daily living, but realign with his will. Amen. So, Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you, Father, for this word tonight. I pray, O oh God, that it touched hearts and changed lives. Whatever in our hearts is not of you, God, forgive us. Take it out. Change us. Make us better. That we can walk by faith and not by sight to be obedient, to serve you with our hearts, O oh God. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Each week I do this and offer an invitation to Christ for those who might be a backslider, those who don't know Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior. For the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever should believe in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. That with the mouth confession is made, with the heart man believes into righteousness. You can receive Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, just by praying this simple prayer with me tonight. Max, even once you will, pray this prayer with me in agreement and believe that it has the power to save your soul. So, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I ask you to come into my heart. Forgive me for my sins, known and unknown sins, and cleanse me from all the righteousness. Come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. And I thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, you just got born again. I see quite a few people on tonight. God bless you, Tammy. Good to see you on here tonight. Amen, my friend Tammy. Long time friend. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Uh, Pastor Donald, God bless you, sir. You in April, God bless you. Amen. Prophet April, Shonda. Amen. Quite a few on tonight. Cornell, God bless you, sir. Thank you for tuning in. I know you're at work. But, you know, stay encouraged. Amen. Sister Deborah, God bless you. Thank you again for tuning in tonight with us. But you all have a great night. Anybody got a question before we go? Anyone else got a, another question or comment they want to share before we go tonight? And if you have any questions, you want to inbox me, feel free to inbox me. 
or even call me at 414-299-6463, I believe my number is. I have so many numbers. I got a lot of numbers. <laughs> my God, my God. Amen. But I pray you all be blessed. I'm going to check the number before we go. I'm going to check the right number. I don't want to give the wrong number. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. What is my number? Hallelujah. I got too many numbers. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. That number is 299-6463. I was correct. 414-299-6463. If you want to give me a call, they have a question or a comment they would like to share, even after the live tonight, feel free to do so at any time. But you all be blessed. Share this vi video with someone else. And I pray that it enrich somebody else in their spirit to help set them free too, because we all need the word of God. And I thank God again for you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord turn his face towards you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you. May the Lord give you peace. Until next week, it's six o'clock hour. We meet again. God bless you all. Shalom be unto you. <laughs>